Are you Tsamoro or are you Guamanian? The terms may seem interchangeable, but they carry distinct meanings that speak to deeper cultural, historical, and identity issues. Guahu si Pulin, and in this video, we will explore the difference between Tsamoro and Guamanian, and how these labels shape the way we see ourselves and our island. In the ordinary understanding of the terms, Tsamoro refers to the indigenous people of the Marianas, while Guamanian is an inclusive term for anyone, regardless of ethnicity, who lives on Guam, calls Guam home, or traces their genealogy to Guam. So while Tsamoros can identify as Guamanian, not all Guamanians can identify as Tsamoru. However, it's important to remember that not all Tsamoros can or choose to refer to themselves as Guamanian. Guam is just one island in the Marianas, and many Tsamoros live in or trace their roots primarily to the northern Mariana Islands. Furthermore, today, Tsamoros tend to avoid using Guamanian, instead preferring to identify as Tsamoru. This contrasts sharply with previous generations, where Guamanian was widely embraced by Tsamorus. To understand this shift, we must first unravel the history behind the term Guamanian. The term Guamanian was adopted after World War II to distinguish the Tsamorus of Guam from those in the northern Mariana Islands, who were designated as Saipanese by the Americans. In 1946, the U.S. initiated informal polls among Tsamorus to gauge their preference for a name change. Guamanian was chosen over other labels like Guamese and Guamians. For many Tsamorus, embracing this new label symbolized a move towards a modern era under American influence. Anthropologist Laura Thompson even noted in her 1947 publication that Tsamorus preferred the newly adopted label Guamanian over Tsamoru, which had been the traditional self-identifier before 1946. Although Guamanian was technically ethnically neutral, it was typically understood to refer exclusively to the indigenous people, the Tsamorus, since they made up the vast majority of Guam's population at the time. For many Tsamorus, Guamanian was synonymous or even interchangeable with Tsamoru, and some even considered it a more modern term for themselves. This is evidence in writings like Reminios Paris's 1952 Tsamoru historical work, which uses phrases like ancient Guamanians, first Guamanians, and early Guamanians. The U.S. government also saw Guamanian as the same as Tsamoru, as federal legislation, such as the original 1950 Organic Act of Guam, used the terms Guamanian descent and Guamanian ancestry to refer to the indigenous people. During this period, non samoros living on Guam were referred to by their ethnicity or nationality, such as Filipinos or Japanese, with white Americans often called statesiders. While Samoros, of course, continued to use the word Samoro, it was typically reserved for referring to their indigenous language or pre-colonial ancestors. However, over time, the term Guamanian became contested as the island's demographics shifted, with Samoros becoming less than half of the population by 1970. This demographic change complicated the understanding of Guamanian, leading to debates over its meaning. Could non samorus call themselves Guamanian? What about Samoros who left Guam for the states? Could they continue to identify as Guamanian? Additionally, as more non samorus began identifying as Guamanian, distinctions emerged, with people hyphenating Guamanian with their ethnicities, such as Samoru Guamanian or Filipino Guamanian. Public figures like Governor Ricky Bergaglio used the term inclusively in speeches addressing my fellow Guamanians to generate unity among all residents of Guam. Meanwhile, Samoru's particularly activists began challenging the use of Guamanian, viewing it as a term that diminished their long history and indigenous identity by reducing them to just another group on the island. As Guamanian became increasingly contested in the 1970s, the traditional identifier Tsamoru began to reemerge, coinciding with the early stages of the Tsamoru cultural renaissance, which saw Tsamorus taking greater pride in their indigenous heritage. This shift is evident in the Pacific Daily News newspapers, where the usage of Guamanian vastly outnumbered Tsamoru in the 1950s and 1960s. 
While there was an increase in the use of Tsumoru from 1954 to 1961, this was largely due to the Tsumoru Hour advertisements, which vastly inflated the results. However, in 1962, after the newspapers stopped featuring Tsumoru Hour, the use of Tsumoru decreased to its actual level. By the late 1960s, Samoru began to rise, eventually overtaking Guamanian in the 1970s, a trend that has continued since. Guamanian still remained a popular term, especially among Samorus in the States, partly because it was more recognizable than Samoru due to the inclusion of the place name Guam. Additionally, cultural shifts on the island often took longer to influence Tamorus in the States due to the geographic distance. The 1980 U.S. Census, which for the first time officially used Guamanian as an identifier, further institutionalized and reinforced its usage among Tamorus in the States. The Guam Census used Tamoru. Meanwhile, on Guam during the 1980s, the use of Guamanian began to decline. While Samoru continued to gain prominence, by the early 2000s, it became clear that Samoru had become the preferred identifier for Samoru's over Guamanian. The Samoru Renaissance, along with the efforts of Samoru activists, played a significant role in this shift. This is reflected in the PDA newspaper, where the use of Samoru overwhelmingly outnumbered Guamanian from the 2000s onward. Although there was a small uptick in the use of Guamanian during the beginning of Governor Eddie Cabo's administration from 2011 to 2019, due to his promotion of the Guamanian dream, which framed the term in its inclusive, contemporary sense to represent all residents of Guam, the usage of Guamanian has since declined to its lowest levels. With that said, it's okay if you, as a Tsumoru, identify yourself as Guamanian, and many Tsumoru still do. However, it's important to be aware of the history behind the term. While it can be a source of pride, it has also been used in ways that can unintentionally diminish or erase your Tsumoru heritage. Understanding this context allows you to use the term thoughtfully, if you do so. In conclusion, in the years immediately following World War II, there was a rush among Tsumorus to become more American, to speak English, and to westernize. This new identity led Tsumorus to embrace the newly invented term Guamanian. However, as Tsumorus recognized the importance of their indigenous heritage, they returned to their traditional self-identifier, Tsumoru. Furthermore, as demographic changes reduced Samorus to less than half of the island's population and broadened the definition of Guamanian to include non samorus the term Guamanian was seen as erasing the unique identity of the indigenous people of Guam. The term overlooked the 3,500-year history of the Samorus on the island, reducing them to just another ethnic group. But Samorus are not just another group. They are the indigenous people of Guam who have a special relationship with the land. And Guamanian made that 3,500-year history and that special relationship with the land irrelevant. For us, Tsumorus, Guam is not just our home. It is our homeland. And that is why I will always proudly say, Guahu Tsumoru. I am Tsumoru. If you liked and enjoyed the video, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to produce more Pacific Studies content. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications. Follow me on social media at Poulan Speaks. And a special Sidious Masi to Patreon supporters Puti Un, Dylan Sablon, and Jesse Babauta. Sidious Masi for watching Guahusi Poulan and Poulan has spoken. Esta.